Good morning, this is Art, and welcome to the vlog with no name. I am in my fortress of solitude this morning, here to talk to you about my last three years in about 10 minutes or less. Um, this is going to be about my goal of quiet quitting my job and moving on to other things in life. A um, <clears throat> couple of things. Um, Please, if you can, like, share, and subscribe to this video. Uh, that helps me out quite a bit, and you guys have been doing that, and I appreciate it. Uh, I've got notes on another screen, which is why I'm turning as I'm going here. So what is quiet quitting? Because I've been asked that. Um, it's there's, there's a number of definitions out there, and it depends upon your viewpoint, whether you're the employee or you're the manager of the employee. But the one I found that fit my situation is when I can't take a toxic work environment anymore. That's what, unfortunately, the whole job evolved to. And you just stop showing back up to work. And, you know, I worked at home, so that was no big deal. But I kind of avoided things at the office. Working in a toxic environment is exhausting up to the point where complete respect goes out the window. And that's what, unfortunately my job evolved into. When I started in 2012, it was a great job and I enjoyed it quite a bit. But over the years, things changed. I changed. Uh, my life situation changed. And I became very disillusioned with what I was doing and how I was doing it. Um, so about three plus, let's just over three years ago, I finally decided I'm going to start working towards leaving this job and retiring. I was 62 at the time when I made this decision and why I elected this path. Uh, we had just concluded in 2020 a software project and it wasn't a great outcome for me. Um, I felt I got nothing out of the project. I felt I learned nothing from the project. I felt I couldn't support the product. Um, so that, that, was, that was step number one. Then shortly after that, my wife suffered a series of strokes. And that got me to think, you know, what, what does my future look like? I mean, she's, she's alive right now. She's in a long-term care facility, and I visit her frequently. Um, but my life has changed. And, you know, some people, I've actually, I actually had somebody at the office said, tell me, your life is ruined. And it's like, I didn't understand that. And when she said it, and I never vetted it out, but I don't feel my life is ruined. I feel my life is now different. Um, I'm trying to clean up messes around the house. You can see I got a mess behind me I got to work on uh, eventually, but I've got other rooms to do first. Um, and so with that and her stroke, I started coming to grips with my own mortality. I come from a family that does not live long. You know, I'm probably these, you know, me in my mid 60s or near mid 60s. It's probably, I'm probably one of the few males on my side of the family that's lived this long. Um, so that's, that's got me thinking, you know, why am I literally banging my head against the wall working where I'm working? Um, and number three, I've been working in the oil and gas industry on and off for about 40 years. It's been a love-hate relationship, and I got to the hate point, uh, namely departmental organizations. Um, they brought in a new manager from outside the company, and I just could not see eye to eye with him. He's, you know, he might be a good manager, but not for the type of people he's managing. Uh, so we we had we would butt heads continuously. I would cringe every time the phone rang and it was him. Um, it took a toll on my mental health to the point where I started seeing a mental health professional. That's how bad things were. Um, so what I ended up doing over these three years was just get ready. Uh, saved aggressively, did a number of home improvements that I could do while money was still coming in. Um, and so I've got a really nice looking house that I'm happy with at this point. Is, is there other work that needs to be done in the house? Yes, but that'll be some point later. I just don't know when. 
So I've got that. I've saved aggressively. I've got no debt, which is great. No mortgage, no other long-term pieces of debt. I just have the current month's credit cards. And that expenditure has dropped tremendously. Um, so my goal was to hopefully, I was going to try to make it to June of 2024. That would have been just beyond my 65th birthday and then retire. Uh, my other goal was, you know, if they got fed up with me, which they did, was to get a severance package, which is what I got. And it was a fairly decent severance package. I was happy with it. Um, you know, and, and a lot of it is I've had people reach out to me from the company I work for. It goes, are you upset over this? And it's like, no, I have planned for it. I want it out and I want it out with something. And I got that. So I'm happy. Um, the day it happened, uh, November 11th, 2023, November 1st, 2023, there's ones in there. Um, they, my manager actually flew down from Canada with the head of human resources. And I think they were expecting me to break down and be upset over this. And my first response to my manager was, crap, I expected you to do this six months ago. That's how, that's how bad things have gotten between me and him. Um, I was relieved. There was a tremendous release of stress at that point, even though I was, uh, I was now unemployed, technically. Uh, other thing I've liked to this point, I didn't realize this until I left, was my phone got very quiet. No Teams messages blaring at me continuously, no emails with problems coming at me continuously, no phone calls coming at me continuously, um, which was a tremendous relief of stress. I can't tell you how grateful I am that this happened because it would have killed me. And, I, and I've seen too many people in my 40 plus years of working uh, in corporate America of people dying behind their desk. I've seen it. I've been in the office where I'm looking at a guy one minute, walk down the hall, and then the next minute he's gone. I've had this happen. And it's like, that's not for me. I had my father die driving home from work. And what made it even more interesting, I was the passenger in the seat next to him. And that was an interesting three minutes of hell wondering how I'm going to get the car stopped on the highway. So, you know, that's that's a lot of what shaped my whole attitude towards work. I'm not going to kill myself over a job. And I didn't. So what's next for Art? That's for another time. I think I've said enough. I'm happy this happened. I want everybody to know I'm happy that this happened. And I want everybody to know that you're out there working. You don't have to put up with this bullshit. You know, you need to evaluate your life. You need to evaluate whether you're in a good spot. You need to evaluate, okay, what do I really want to do with my life to make money, to support myself, to have a roof over my head, to have a vehicle to drive, to have food on the table? Um, again, another video will kind of cover the post-November 1st uh, incident and we will go from there. So my question for you is what are you how are you handling work stress? You know, are you at the point where you want to throw your hands up and say, screw it? That's kind of what I want to know. So if you would, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And until then, this is Art and I will see you next time.